we will follow this afternoon with more uh, surgically oriented topic, which is the surgical management of the posterior mandible. And I will review techniques that are commonly used to vertically augment bone for the posterior mandible. So our objectives will be to recognize the main techniques for vertical bone augmentation for the posterior mandible, select clinical indications where vertical grafting may be advantageous, and identify potential risks and pitfalls. So posterior mandible, according to the ITI-SAC classification, is classified as a straightforward situation when we have enough bone on height and width. And we can do single tooth restorations. We can do three, four unit bridges. Dr. Martin will talk about that later. But also, posterior mandible can be a very dangerous situation because there is a very important anatomic structure, the inferior alveolar canal, plus sublingual anatomical structures. And that, unfortunately, is something we see, uh, you know, we used to see more before the convenient CT times, and, but we still see it occasionally, which is an implant going through the inferior alveolar canal, leaving the patient with the permanent paresthesia. Even if we remove the implant, and nowadays it's relatively easy to remove an implant, we cause another damage to the nerve when we remove implants. So, if you see this patient Monday morning in your office with a posterior mandibular deficiency, what are your treatment choices? What are you going to plan for this patient? Some of you will probably say, well, we will extract all these anterior teeth here.